Hey everybody, Jeff Blake here. We're talking image slicing here in Photoshop. Welcome to part two of our series on this topic. In part one, you got the basics of image slicing. We got a rough sliced layout happening here. Now I wanna start getting a little bit more detailed with my layout. So I'm gonna start dividing up this header here. So I'm gonna right click on him and go divide slices. Ah, now I wanted to show you this. Notice how I'm still getting that divide horizontally into, so it remembers my last command, but notice it's dividing the top slice into three, the center slice into three, and that footer slice into three. Why did it do that? I'm gonna cancel this out here. It did it because all three slices are still selected. So check this out. I'm gonna go back up to the top or my header slice. I'm gonna single click on him. The other two slices deselect. Perfect. So I'm gonna right click, divide slice one more time. Now I'm only working on that header slice. I hope that makes sense. So in other words, before you start chopping up your slices, dividing them up, make sure you have the right slice selected before you right click and choose divide slice. Hopefully all good. All right, now I don't wanna divide this guy horizontally at this point, I wanna divide him vertically. I wanna create slices for each of my objects here along the header. How many do I need? Well, let's count them up. The logo, one, two, three, four, five for the Apollo shop, six, and we'll do one more for the end here, seven. So down in here, I'm gonna type in seven, click on okay. I really don't care where Photoshop drops these cut lines because I'm gonna come along and adjust each of them individually, something like this. takes a little bit of time to get all this set up. There we go. Again, I'm just looking for natural divides, natural breaks through my image. So there's the header, that's looking good. I'm gonna head down now to the footer area. So I'm gonna command click him or control click him, right click, divide slice. Now, how many do I need? One for the buzzes buzz bin, two, and I'll do a third one here for these thumbnails and a fourth for the remainder here. thing I gotta say is there's no right or wrong way to do this. The only thing that you have to be aware of is that every slice is going to wind up as a separate image. I didn't say that earlier, did I? I should have. Anyway, so in other words, my to the moon and back slice, that's going to be a separate image. About the missions, that's going to be a separate image and so on, right? So I hope this is making sense. Why did I do this last piece as one single slice? I don't know. I could have chopped it up into three or four other slices. You can if you want. It's really up to you. Anyway, things are rocking here. Now, I want to show you a couple other cool things. I just mentioned that each of the slices is going to be saved out as a separate image, right? So you got to kind of plan ahead a little bit in your head here. So in other words, my buttons up at the top, I obviously want to set hyperlinks for these guys once I get this layout into Dreamweaver. So do I want a button this size? These are going to be massive buttons, right? That's no good. So check this out. I'm going to select multiple slices. I'm holding down, this is on the Mac now, I'm holding down Command and Shift. If you're using a Windows machine, it's going to be Control and Shift to select multiple slices, right? I'm going to right click, down to Divide. Now look at the mess I'm making here. But I don't want to go vertically. I'm going to uncheck that. I want to go horizontally. And I'm going to divide by two. Click on OK. Now, with everything still selected, if I move one line in one slice, notice all the lines in all the slices move. See how that works? I'll do that one more time. So long as everything is selected, everything's gonna move in unison, right? So there, these are more sizable buttons, I'd say here. Maybe I'll pull this guy over just a little bit, something like that, okay? Now notice when I drag this line over to the right just a little bit, it goofed up this guy here. See right in here, I get an auto slice. Let me pull this a little bit wider and you can see what I mean. I didn't actually define this area as a slice, so it comes in as an auto slice. And that's no good. I really don't like auto slices. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna undo a couple of times. I'll use my history for this. 
all the way back to where I had resized here. And all I'm going to do is select the logo slice as well and then drag on that line. And because that neighboring slice is selected, no auto slice gets created. I hope that makes sense for you. Now, one other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to select these slices going right across the top here. This next step is optional, but it's a good opportunity for me to show you another cool command. So I've selected all these slices right across the top. I'm going to right click and down to combine slices. So in other words, merge them all together, join them all together into one single image. Cool stuff. All right, as far as the rest of the layout, I think I will leave things the way they are. I have plans for this large slice in the center here. I'm going to throw some content into that guy. All the other slices are fine as they are. It's really up to you, though. It all depends on the layout that you're working on. And you know, I should say this as well. Maybe it isn't an entire layout you're working on. Maybe it's just the header graphic or a banner graphic that you're working on. Maybe it's a menu or something. All the same principles apply. You just chop everything up, get it all set up here in Photoshop. Photoshop. And now with everything chopped up, we're ready to save this guy out and get him into Dreamweaver. So, and you remember earlier I said that Photoshop's automatically going to create all the necessary background code. So this is a walk in the park. Check this out. I'm going to go up to my file menu, down to save for web and devices. Okay, there we are. Now, I don't know if you've used this dialog box before or not, but basically how it works is I could select a slice or select my image and then use my optimization settings over here on the right hand side. For example, I could choose my file format that I want to use. I can set some of my different compression options. In this case, it's going to be my color options, the number of colors I want and so on. Right. So that's how that works. That's just kind of a quick run through there for you. So what I can do in the situation of a slice image like I have here is maybe some of the slices would be better suited as JPEGs and others would be better suited as GIFs. So what I can do, I'm actually just holding down the shift key here and selecting individual slices. So I selected all my buttons there. I could set them as, let's say, for example, a GIF, then highlight some of my other slices and optimize them as, let's say, JPEG with high quality, something like that, right? So you can kind of mix and match your compression settings and your file formats here. It's pretty cool. Anyway, what I'm going to do just for simplicity is I'm going to hit Command A or Control A on the PC, and I'm going to save them all as JPEGs with medium quality. Okay. So by the way, hitting Control A or Command A selects all the slices. I'm going to optimize them all in exactly the same way. Things are looking good here. I'm going to click on Save. Inside the Save Optimize As dialog box, check this out. Photoshop is going to save out an HTML file for me. How awesome is that? Now, down at the bottom, I can decide, do I want to save out HTML and images? In other words, give me the code plus all my slices. Give me just my slices or just give me the code. Okay, so you can mess around with that if you like. At the very bottom here, I can decide, do I want to save out all the slices, only the user-defined slices? We talked about that earlier or only the slices that I have selected. This comes in really handy when you goof up and you need to come back into Photoshop and make some adjustments to your slices. Anyway, last but not least, you have some settings here. Now, if you want, I'm not going to go into massive detail here, but you can come into the settings here and decide how you want certain things to be saved out. For example, here's my HTML options. And again, if you're kind of queasy with the code, I would leave the defaults here, which is what I'm going to wind up doing. But I'll just kind of give you a quick look at each of these screens here. So there's slices. Now, what's going to happen here? This is kind of important underneath slices is Photoshop by default is going to create a table for me. That's how all the slices are going to be held in the page. So I could go table or I could say generate 